Now that we have the standard form at our hand, let's think about how to get the actual slack and surplus variables. And after that, we can write down the complete solution. Remember that our linear problem came from a manufacturer trying to decide whether to uh, make trail mix boxes or the protein bar boxes. And uh, each of these inequalities here were about the ingredients A, B, and C. We also solved this and found out that the optimal solution was X equal to 8 and Y equals to 10. So that was the answer. For this, this uh, value, we can uh, basically figure out uh, what the actual S1 and S2 and S3 are by plugging this in. So let's see. First, uh, if you plug in 8 and 10 into the first equation, we have 8 plus 4 times 10 plus S1. Uh, equals to 48, right? So that's going to be actually uh, 48 plus S1 equals to 48, which means S1 must be 0. So S1 equals to 0. Okay. And you do the same for the other ones. Uh, just use the standard form to figure out the values of S1, S2, S3. So here, 3 times 8 plus uh, 4 times 10 plus S2 is equal to 64. So that you have 24 plus 40, so that's 64. 64 plus S2 equals to 64. So that also means S2 is 0. So the first two select variables are 0. And then uh, 4 times 8 plus 2 times 10 plus S3 must equal to 62. Oh, this time we don't get 0. We get uh, 32. 4 times 8 is 32. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 plus 32 is 52 plus S3 equals to 62. So if you subtract 52 both sides, you get that S3 must equal to 10. So you get 10 as your select surplus variable for the last one. So we can fill those numbers in there at the select surplus column. And then uh, the available is what's on the right side, 48, 64, 62. So these were the available quantity of the ingredients every day. Uh, the manufacturer were, was buying this much item, uh, this much quantity of the ingredients A and B and C. Now how much were used? Well, these numbers when you calculate it, basically the, the numbers you calculate by plugging in 8 and 10 to the left side are how much was actually used to make them. So you have uh, 48, 64, and then the last one, this was 52, so you put 52 there. And therefore, uh, you have to make sure that if you write this table, always the select and surplus is equal to the available minus used. Okay, if this was a, a surplus, then uh, y you would do available minus used and uh, take the negative of it. That has to equal to the surplus value. If it's the select value, it should just be available minus used. Okay, so what is the complete solution? X equals to 8 and Y equals to 10 is just the solution. But when you say complete solution in linear programming, that means uh, you want to say not just the value of X, and then y, you also need to write down the surplus value. So s1 equals to 0, s2 equals to 0, and s3 equals to 10. Those will be uh, the complete solution of the given linear problem. 
Now, when you get zero slack or zero surplus, that ingredient or that constraint is called the binding constraint. So this one here will be called, or well, this one will be called a binding constraint. Whereas this constraint, ingredient B, will be, well, that's also binding because it's zero. And the last one, because this is non-zero, that's called non-binding constraint. So uh, this building tables is important when you try to figure out which of the constraint is binding and which one is non-binding. Okay.